I am Gina Polly Applegate, and this is a day in the life of an elementary student. For the elementary, there are freedoms, but it's not a free-for-all with the freedoms. Um, so these are the freedoms that the children have. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, 480. One of the pinnacles of Montessori is that they have the freedom to choose their work. And that doesn't mean that they only choose their own work, but what it means is if a child comes in on a Monday morning with an insect that they found at home and they're interested in identifying it and looking up the etymology and all of those things, we're going to put down our lesson plans and we're going to follow the child on that and take it as far as, um, as we want to. And also as the guide, you are trying to find what interests them and make sure they learn what they need to learn based on what they're interested in. They have the freedom to work without interruption. And what that means is what they're interested in, they can work for as long as their focus holds them. And they're not limited to, sorry, it's 1045, time for math, or switching um, mid, mid work. So that would be 4,989 divided by 7. Ooh. And so you can write down problems like that and uh, make them random. That's cool. And that's kind of fun to do. You I want to get like, really fancy? I kind of like the first option better. You're going to like this. If I know you, if you want to get really fancy about it, you can use the 20-sided die like to inspire you. Oh. I know. And it is, they um, have the freedom to work with others. And that is um, a difference, too, is you will see that happy buzz it's not um, always a quiet environment, but um, there is a difference between the socializing and then the buzz that you hear of children um, passionately debating the difference between um, whether or not Pluto is a planet, for example. You'll do all the intro, but you're doing the research stage right now. So you're deciding what material need and what spiritual need. I want, I want to do so you want to do transportation animals. Yeah. What can I do? Uh, and so you guys write that out and divide it. Everybody said that I want to do I want to do cultural art. They have the freedom to move around the room. One of the things we tell the children um, frequently is they get to choose when they do their follow-up, where they do it, with whom they do it, but they don't get to choose whether or not to follow up on their lessons. It's two, two, final. Okay. On a typical year. The children have the freedom to, if they are interested in something, they can organize, um, the group that's working on something can organize a going out, which is different than a field trip. If they are interested in dogs, they might plan a going out to talk to the people at the animal shelter. We've had going outs to the grocery store to shop for the supplies that they need to make a cultural meal and things like that. But that is a unique thing to Montessori Elementary is that the going out is a part of their work in the curriculum. The children have a work record where they're keeping track of what they're doing and how they're using their time. Now over the six years of elementary, there is a big span on how detailed those get. A six-year-old who might still be learning how to read a clock, you know, it's going to look very different than the 10 to 12-year-old who is able to write down, I worked on multiplication today and I did five equations. So we do sit down regularly with each child one-on-one -on -one just to check in, um, help them organize their work, help them make the plans on when they're going to um, do things, because elementary children often need some support on time management and project management. That's what, so I think let's continue that this week. Do you want to have a review on it? Or do you think you just need more practice in there? So. A typical day in elementary, they arrive and in the morning we have a three hour work period. In an ideal situation, you have a variety of work happening. If you just stop and take a snapshot at any moment in that three hour cycle, you hopefully will see some science happening, some math in another area. There's some children doing story writing or um, report researching for a report. But in a, in a healthy Montessori elementary classroom, you're gonna see lots of different things happening at the same time. 
part of that is to keep the children excited about their work. They often, since Montessori is social based, they're very much inspire each other. And when there is a lot of things going on and that excitement for learning and lots of like, ooh, that's cool, I wanna do that too. That really helps us um, and helps the children too with their learning. The Montessori term for that is cosmic education, which um, sounds like kind of a goofy term, but what it means is the interconnectedness of all the different areas of the curriculum. You might have a geometry lesson, for example, might start out um, with a history lesson on, let's talk about who Pythagoras is and the story of Pythagoras's life. So we're gonna put another tin here. You guys can go ahead and fill that in. Is it too far away? This is actually true. I'm gonna get it closer to you to reach so far. I don't think he's a just this week, um, some children were doing some animal classification and taxonomy, and they asked, what does a subfamily mean? And so we looked up what sub is a prefix, and it turned into a language lesson. What other words start with that prefix sub? That means under. And so um, in, a, in an ideal Montessori world, the children actually don't necessarily even know the difference between the areas of the curriculum because they are, being, um, they are exploring it as if it is all interconnected because it really is. What's the first card in your grammar book? It is. All right, and what are articles? All right, do you have any articles in your sets? Now, do you want to use the symbol or do you want to, um, you can draw it in if you want to, but for the sake of today, we might just um, put the symbols. All right, any other articles? There will be lessons that are smaller group lessons, and that can be anywhere from two to five to six or seven children in a group. Um, and these presentations are going on at the same time in different areas of the room. And before a child is released from a lesson, often you discuss with them, what are you going to do to practice and follow up with this? And that's another one of those limitations um, on the freedoms that they have. Again, you don't get to choose whether or not you follow up and practice this, but you do get to choose where and with whom and um, when you do it. Person, place, thing, or idea? Math. Math is a much of the work, it's the process more so than the product. So you aren't gonna see grades and you definitely will see fewer papers um, come home and worksheets, it's particularly the worksheets, but there isn't as much paper because much of the construction is going on internally in their mind. Um, sometimes your child will bring home some big creation. Sometimes they will have worked on it in a group. And it's again, since it's the process, not the product, they're not each bringing something home to show you. A skill unique to Montessori children is that when they are interested in something, they know how to go and find out more about it. They're not expecting everyone to tell them things and spoon feed uh, the things they want to know. They really know how to seek understanding and seek out what they're interested in, which is such a valuable life skill. In an elementary classroom, especially compared to the children's house, it's going to be louder because you have these groups of children working together. They are social beings and it is loud and it can get really messy because the um, elementary child, 6 to 12, they are not the tidiest, most organized. And I will hear from parents often that they had a children's house child who was um, very, needed that order and were very tidy and then all of a sudden they turn 6 and they just become a mess. And um, that doesn't really improve for a long time, has been my personal experience with that. So that is all the things that are happening in the three hour work period in the morning. You will also see that snack happens at various times. There's not a specific snack time, so much as the children, when they're hungry, can go out. And um, in my classroom, we're doing it outside, but usually there's a designated snack table, but they can choose whenever they want to go have snack. Um, you're gonna teach me how to cook on Friday, right? So after the three hour work period in the morning, they have lunch and recess. After lunch and recess, we have a two hour work period that includes read aloud, and the children are allowed to do handwork and artwork while they listen to the story during read aloud. 
and more fish for a hungry European market. In fact, from the 16th to 18th century, 60% of all the fish eaten in Europe were codfish, while much of the remaining 40% was herring. All of this fish needed to be cured with salt, both for taste and why else would they need to cure the fish in salt? <clears throat> Close, but no cigar, yes. To preserve it. To preserve it, excellent. We are big fans of handwork, and that is because it helps develop the concentration and the focus, but more so it's an exercise in delaying gratification. Those knitting projects and crochet projects and weaving projects, they often can't finish in one day, and so they are learning how to keep that sustained attention, but also delay the gratification. If you have not yet finished, please raise your hand. Okay, that's the, your first work choice this afternoon. You're dismissed to go start that now, because we're gonna have our lit circle today. So at the end of the day, the children have a classroom responsibility, and this is to help them, um, one, the care of the environment, that this is a community and this is their classroom. The children are responsible for sweeping and wiping the tables and taking the trash out. They're also responsible for um, loading and unloading the dishwasher as well as um, doing the laundry and folding and putting them away. On a weekly basis in the elementary classroom, there are class meetings where the children will write acknowledgements for each other. And that often starts out with the children saying, you know, thank you, Bobby, for being my friend. And we work with them through modeling to get very specific. Thank you, Bobby, for being a good friend by finding my lost pencil. It's also an opportunity for them to write down their concerns and we do a lot of group problem solving and that's often done through modeling too but the children are in charge of coming up with the solutions and often it ends with a vote on what the majority feels like is the best solution for whatever concern they have. Um, it was like say you'll be um, asking somebody hey can I sit with you you know and you're like they're like oh no this person is sitting with Okay, so the excluding, it sounds like the excluding and feeling left out is a big, um, big trend here. Yes. So that is a day in the life of elementary students. We're doing a cultural on China. Yeah. I'm doing so, animals and I already did clothing. And she's doing introduction. I also have other parts like government, I'm doing economy, I'm doing history, and I'm doing food. I love doing animals and rest, and she just finished clothing, and after that she's going to have to do arts and, and religion. And religion. We use all of the books, and if we can't find it, then we uh, look at the iPad. What kind of books are you using? Encyclopedia. After we're all done with our project, then, like, sometimes, like, we usually stick it all on one board together and then do a big presentation to the class. We're raising silkworms. We're going to raise silkworms. The mulberry tree has fresh mulberries. We're going to use to feed them so they can live for these silk. I just love kind of the afternoon work period because at that point our new thing is lights off in the afternoon. And I'm beginning to like it. I thought I wouldn't, but I like the relaxation of it. What's your favorite part of the day? morning it, it, i mean you got you got your blood pumping you're ready to work and but most importantly it's just fun to do the morning work period declan and i and also a kid named charlie actually did a project on a dinosaur a dinchiosaurus project and it, it was a pretty good collaboration i had a lot of fun doing it i am looking forward to just learning how to do new things I want to learn how to knit, and I want to get a little better at the piano. I'm, I'm looking forward to learning about chemical reactions and when you put magnesium and salt together. I've heard it explodes. <laughs> you write acknowledgments if like, you can say like, for example, Declan is a good friend. Or you could be concerned about people not flipping the bathroom signs like it would still say occupied when someone is finished. So that would be a concern. 
We gather down in a big circle and the teacher pulls them out. Acknowledgements go to the people they're directed to and concerns get written down and talked about and if there's multiple, the class put it, puts it to a vote which one to talk about. Uh, we did a project about Japan and Sean wanted to do a Hawacha, but we didn't know if that was actually real or not. So instead of ancient warfare, modern warfare and made a World War II fighter plane, the Yokosuka, that drops a 3D printed bomb and uh, Oka, which is a suicide plane that you crash and explode. So Miss Gina made us use the history report charts. It's basically just a chart with a bunch of questions. We used it for like researching like what did they trade and I just wrote about Japan because there's no really ancient Japan books. So modern Japan, Zishon wrote about ancient Japan. After we were done with the report in the airplane, Miss Gina said that since we did such a good job on it, that it can be something permanent in the class that we can hang from the ceiling. We did like a big report on the Teleosaurus. Okay. Kind of like a, it's a hippo it's, right now. Yeah, it's a hippo, but like older. Yeah, it's a, it's like a yeah. prehistoric hippo that hippo has a rhino. horn. Yeah, it's, and it's hard to explain. Two years ago. It was really yeah. fun and we did a painting on it together on a, a big canvas. Like, right now we're in the middle of a project. We have to know how to write a big three paragraph thing and we have to have three dis different resources. And this is getting us ready for our term paper. Yes. Five paragraphs and eight resources. So um, You're doing hippos, right? Yeah, I'm doing hippos again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're obsessed with hippos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing fossil fuels, which I think is really cool. thing we do in FRL is we do a literature, literature circles, like book circles. So each grade will like have their own lit circle, and so we'll each be assigned a book to read. And like, there's all these different stories that Miss Gina has. Sometimes they're novels, sometimes they're short stories, or junior grade books. But like, she she'll read us the story first, and then she'll tell us to go through. And kind of depends what the story is about, but she'll be like. Uh, write a paragraph on an animal you liked in this book or find some words you don't know. I also really like all the music privileges that we have in our class. Like we have these laylies and piano and town bars. bars and like little drum things, bongos. And our teacher is really good at the ukulele so she'll sometimes have like lessons on that. And that's really fun. So three, two, one. Do do do. do.